Recall that the specific mythological figure Luke Skywalker resembles most, largely by design, is King Arthur. You know, common boy, gets a special sword, meets a wizard, finds out he's of noble lineage. This, this isn't news to anyone, right? And, well, how did things end up for King Arthur again? Blow me to Bermuda! Once again, I get not liking it, but this idea that it doesn't fit with the franchise or it doesn't make sense in the narrative, yeah, that's a lot harder to justify in my opinion. However, that having been acknowledged, I do think there's another level of resentment and rejection spinning out of this that's coming more from a place of misreading what people think the story is saying in the film. You see, a lot of the readings amusingly both for and against The Last Jedi frame the film as a kind of anti-nostalgia or anti-fandom treatise, mainly based around Kylo Ren's monologue about killing the past. If for good or ill, the new trilogy is all in on the idea of its story as a meta-narrative about the new Disney-owned Lucasfilm inheriting Star Wars legacy and what that means, and The Last Jedi's overall arc seems to be very much about setting up the starting point of a major status quo shakeup. That's definitely what the final shot with the kid is about, and it feels like the logical place Disney would want to take the brand long term. It just frees up a lot of possibilities. It makes sense. But what I feel is happening as well is a lot of people are extrapolating out from this that The Last Jedi wants to erase everything that Star Wars used to be and shit all over the mythos in this specific case, somehow say that Luke was never great and that the Jedi suck in order to hold up the new paradigms and new characters as being superior. And I don't actually see that at all. In fact, I'd argue that the entire Rey and Luke story is really nothing less than a very deliberate, earnest, and sincere love letter to the idea of fandom and Star Wars fans in particular. We all good? Okay then, let's talk about Rey from Nowhere for a minute. Firstly, just so we're all on the same page, just as the meta-narrative of the new trilogy is very much about Kathleen Kennedy's incarnation of Lucasfilm inheriting and trying to carry forward Star Wars as a preeminent modern pop mythology in the Western consciousness, in terms of characters and on-screen action, that story has mainly been told through the non-Jedi and or Force-using characters, hence the First Order and the Resistance both being relatively new power structures, both trying to maintain and expand the legacies of the Empire and the Rebellion, respectively. But it's also telling an adjacent meta-narrative about Star Wars fans' experience with receiving and carrying out that same legacy, just as Luke, Vader, Obi-Wan, and the Emperor and Yoda all had their own private Jedi versus Sith story playing out within but very much apart from the bigger scale military conflicts that the non-Force users were engaged in in the original trilogy, here the Star Wars fandom metaphors are all contained within the storyline that jointly encapsulates Rey and Kylo Ren. To put it bluntly, the two of them are both in-universe metaphorical stand-ins for Star Wars fans. I mean, just look at them. Kylo Ren goes around in a Vader-style voice-changing helmet that he doesn't need to wear for any reason. He's not a cyborg. He's not really a Sith. He just chooses to dress up like one. Vader had armor. Kylo Ren has a costume. He is literally a Darth Vader cosplayer. <laughs> co-leading an entire movement that's basically made up of bad fanboys. That's why the Forced Order's accoutrement all look like Imperial gear reimagined by the world's most obnoxious ten-year-old fan artist, from the hunched-over, more monster-looking walkers to Ren's stupid handguard lightsaber, which looks exactly like a cheesy mod someone would patch into a lesser Star Wars game. Seriously, that's our new villains. The First Order are basically the Sith War reenactors from Futurama. Darth Sploder. Darth Erderer. Darth Edhead. Now, meanwhile, Rey is cut from some of the same cloth. She knows all about the Force powers and lightsabers and the Falcon because she's a fangirl for Star Wars. Or, for her, actual wars that happened 30 or so years ago that she's heard stories about. The Jedi were real. It's true. The Force, the Jedi. All of it. It's all true. She has a non-functional but sentimental nostalgia helmet of her own, she has a little Star Wars doll, which is now something of a repeating motif in the new trilogy, and we first meet her living in the remains of a downed at, -AT our new heroine who is herself either the last Jedi or the first of whatever the new permutation of good Force users that's going to grow out of all this will be called, is an adult woman who essentially still sleeps in a Star Wars bed. This is a big part of why the whole Rey is a Mary Sue thing pisses me off, because it's such a deliberately shitty misreading. Back when Mary Sue meant anything as genre criticism, it described obvious self-insert characters characters who are omnicompetent with no explanation apparently necessary. Rey has an explanation. She takes to all this stuff like second nature because she's grown up being into it. And also, the amazingness of her skill set is way overstated. She's basically so far done the most obvious version of the Jedi mind trick once, implicitly by reputation. She won a lightsaber duel on her own once, and it was against a wounded guy who's kind of a wiener. And let's face it, being good with a quarterstaff, meaning you know how to use a sword, is only at least almost as shaky logic-wise as knowing how to fly the equivalent of a bush plane, meaning you're all set to fly the equivalent of a fighter jet. Either way, on a meta level and in-universe, she's super good at Star Wars stuff because she's a Star Wars fan. 
That's not a Mary Sue, that's Gwenpool. So from that perspective, the entirety of Rey's interactions with Luke in The Last Jedi are nothing less than a literal and figurative encounter wherein a Star Wars fangirl approaches the veteran hero of the original Star Wars and essentially says, hey, we need Luke Skywalker to come back and be awesome in Star Wars one more time. And he basically gives her the real-life version of Shatner telling that guy to get a life in that SNL skit because he's done with Star Wars and disillusioned and just decided the whole thing is kind of bullshit. And then he spends several days basically giving her the in-universe version of every deconstructionist cultural critique lecture about how Star Wars and the whole concept of Jedi are bad. It's arrogant, it's elitist, it's based on old dried-up myths that aren't compatible anymore, stuff that's been leveled against this particular franchise forever. Basically, you've heard it all before. All capped off with the idea that all the bad stuff about the Jedi, aka the Star Wars franchise, and his failure to recognize it is responsible for the existence of Kylo Ren in the First Order, aka shitty Star Wars fanboys. You want to take your shirt off? You want to take your shirt off? God. You want to take that shirt off? Asshole! But here's the key. The Last Jedi is on Rey's side of this argument. The movie thinks Luke is wrong about this. That's why it commits so hard to old man Luke being an obnoxious, disappointing asshole about the whole thing. So we understand in no uncertain terms that when she argues back at him that despite his disillusionment with his reputation, the legacy of Star Wars, the legend of Luke Skywalker, is an important thing that matters to people, is still needed, and can still do good in the universe, she, metaphorically representing Star Wars fans, is right and he's wrong. Not again. There's some necessary gray area to it, of course. The new trilogy does, at least thus far, seem to agree that the Jedi need to evolve in order to endure, even as it maintains that Rey is right about it needing to endure in the first place. Hence why Luke doesn't fully get that he's in the wrong about any of this until he gets a talking to from Yoda. And while we're at it, why it makes sense for Yoda to destroy the altar, but only symbolically, because Rey already took the sacred Jedi text with her, because of course she did. She's a Star Wars fan. If people supposedly in charge of the franchise say it's done now and she disagrees, she'll take it up on her own. And then, like any fanfic writer worth her salter, first alter approach involves trying to find the good in a sensitive bad boy. Everyone has to start somewhere. He's not like anybody I've ever met. He's like a riddle wrapped in an enigma wrapped in a vest. I'm sure he's ugly though. So why can't I stop staring at him? Oh no! But the guy in charge eventually does come around to her view of things anyway, specifically that he and the Jedi and Star Wars are valuable for the good they can inspire in fans like her. That's why the astral projection twist for the big final battle is such a genius gag. Yes, also because Kylo Ren getting humiliated will never stop being fun to watch, but mainly because it allows Luke to not simply show up for one last rescue, but to actually make the legendary version of himself, the invincible, all-powerful, unstoppable Luke Skywalker Jedi Master, who he may never actually have been himself, real enough if only for a moment that it can inspire the good side of the galaxy all over again. You can call it the art of fighting without fighting. Because that's the payoff for making this the central theme of Luke and Rey's story. It's not just Luke Skywalker the man who saves the day, it's the bigger and more powerful idea of Luke Skywalker as he existed for Rey and in the wider cultural imagination, both in the Star Wars universe and in our own. From where I'm sitting, that is the main thematic takeaway from the philosophical side of the story in The Last Jedi, a meta-narrative that says to Star Wars fans, your devotion to this is a good thing, you are right about it being meaningful and important, you are the reason it came back and you are the reason it's going to continue. The guy who says let the past die is a total hypocrite who stays on the shitty path he was already on and firmly establishes himself as irredeemably evil, the disillusioned grump who wanted to end the Jedi sees his error and is redeemed, the fangirl who argued him out of his funk and then led by his example is thus his redeemer and by proxy the co-savior of the resistance. The Star Wars universe is thus preserved and reaffirmed by the faith of a Star Wars fan. I'm not really sure how that could be more the opposite of trashing or diminishing classic Star Wars. Our main heroine is our main heroine because she's driven by reverence for, essentially, classic Star Wars. The guy whose opinion on everything Star Wars that came before is, it sucks, just get rid of it, gets his ass handed to him not just by Luke Skywalker, but by, from a certain perspective, a motion picture about Luke Skywalker, willed into action by the needs of fandom to see one more motion picture about Luke Skywalker. Don't fuck with the Jedi Master, son. Now, 
Whether or not this particular story was the one they should have been telling on its own merits, that's a whole other discussion, i.e. do we really want it to be okay for a feature film in a multimedia branded intellectual property franchise to make sanctifying the existential righteousness of said branded intellectual property as a life philosophy an acceptable theme? I mean, there's definitely a lot of not terribly comfortable arguments to be had on that front, hashtag late capitalism. But for our purposes at the moment, it is the story that The Last Jedi chose to tell, and I think they do a pretty profound job of it, considering how difficult of a juggling act a lot of this material is. And while I get where wires are getting crossed for some people, it kind of still blows my mind that so many are reading an anti-fan message from what seemed to me to be the biggest thumbs up a modern franchise has given its fans without full-on breaking the fourth wall to do so. And in terms of whether or not it disrespects the Star Wars legacy in itself in order to get there, well, consider the now famous final sequence of the film. The kids playing with the makeshift action figures at the end, symbolizing the meta-narrative of Star Wars as an enduring modern legend in the earnest sense, and one imagines Disney is hoping in the business sense as well. They aren't acting out Rey moving the rocks so everyone can escape. They're acting out Luke facing down Ren and the walkers. The Last Jedi literally signs off with a final acknowledgement that yes, the new heroes are carrying this forward now, but only because the original heroes made it possible. And that these kids who will themselves inherit the Star Wars mantle from Rey, Finn, Poe, Rose, and all our other current main players someday will absolutely still be holding Luke, Leia, Han, and the rest in admiration just like they did. A thank you to the fans for carrying on, and a thank you to the veterans for making it worth being carried on. Again, it's like poetry, so sort of if they rhyme, mm -hmm. every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Yeah, at least that's what I got out of it. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B Chapman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest Movie Bob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, Movie Bob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future Movie Bob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another Movie Bob production.